Morning, Pete, North Las Vegas. Decided to go ahead and do a video on this uh, ejector investigation. Uh, if you've been following along with the build series on this M forgery, um, I had some ejection pattern issues. The rifle functioned. Uh, there was no hang-ups feeding or extracting or ejecting, but I wasn't happy with the ejection pattern. There was a lot of inconsistency and things that didn't seem right. So we're, we're going to investigate the uh, bolt that I was using, and I'm going to take it apart. We're going to get the, uh, the ejector plunger and the spring out, take a look, uh, take a look at the pocket inside the bolt, and see if we find anything that way. Uh, but before we do that, uh, I'm going to headspace this brand new bolt carrier group to this upper, because if I can't get to the bottom of what's going on with this, um, I'm just going to swap the entire BCG out and see what happens. So let's go ahead and headspace this real quick. This is our go gauge. I'm using uh, 1.464. So let's slide this in the chamber and see if our BCG goes into full battery. And it does. So far, so good. Let's see what happens with a no-go gauge. Here's our no-go. And um, no-go, in case you couldn't read that, 1.470 is what I'm using. Slide this into the chamber and uh, let's see if it does not go into battery. Okay, I'm pushing on that pretty hard and it will not go into full battery. So this brand new BCG from Wilson Combat has at least passed the um, head spacing. Using this tool I got from uh, Wyndham Weaponry, wow, she's 10, 12 years ago. Let's see the WW on there. Um, if you don't have this tool, you can still get this apart without too much trouble. What I do is I, I cut a case down and you stick that in your, your bolt here, put that in a vise with some soft jaws or some, some blocks of wood to compress the plunger to knock your pin out. And I don't know exactly what size that is. I'd have to go look it up. But um, a 1 16th is what I've used in the past to get that, that roll pin in and out. So we'll get this in the tool, get that pin knocked out, and then we're going to take a look at the spring and the plunger and the pocket. If you have one of these tools, um, line the pin up with the hole on the bottom. You can see it's offset a little bit. If you put this in wrong, then you'll drive the pin into the, you may drive the pin into the tool and, and damage things. All right, I'm going to tap it out. We got the pin out with no damage. Um, correct size punch and using the tool so we'll reuse that pin well visually I think I found the problem the Wilson combat original spring is on the bottom and that's a brand new uh, spring co on the top and you can see it's quite a bit longer I'm going to count the coils and do some measurements I won't bore you guys with, with that kind of detail, but um, yeah, that's that's very suspicious right there. So I think we may have found what, what the ejection pattern issue is. Like I said, let me count coils and we'll do some measurements and I'll get back to you. Oh, one other thing. Uh, in the previous video, I mentioned that this same spring also gets used on your selector. So your selector spring and your bolt ejector spring are the same. And Spring Co. even goes ahead and is nice enough to let you know that. All right, let me go do some measurements off camera. Like I said, I'm not gonna bore you guys with a bunch of showing calipers on the spring, but I'll, I'll let you know what I find as far as the length difference for sure. We did some measurements and the Wilson Combat ejector spring slash safety selector spring 
is out of spec. Um, diameter was pretty close on both of them at 0.104 for the WC and 0.1035 for the Sprinko. Free length is supposed to be about 0.926, and you can see the Wilson Combat is considerably shorter at 0.885. Sprinko came in at 0.936. Now here's something else that's quite a bit different. Number of coils is 27, that's spec. The Wilson Combat has 24 coils, and the Sprinko has the correct 27 coils. So at this point, I'm, I'm confident that I have found the problem. So just out of curiosity, I'm going to take this brand new one apart also and see where we're at with that spring. But like I said, I'm pretty sure that this is what was causing the uh, inconsistent ejection during testing. So I have the original put back together, the one that was giving me the ejection pattern issues. I'm gonna run it without the O-ring, and then if I feel like I need the O-ring, I'll, I'll put it back on. But anyway, uh, we just gotta get this back out to the range and see what's going on. And like I said earlier in this video, I'm going to take this one apart and check its spring. So this is the brand new one. Never fired, and the ejector spring is also coming up short compared to the Sprinko. I just measured the length. The Sprinko, once again, is very, very close. Not even going to bother counting the coils. The uh, Wilson Combat's just too short. So, my, one of my theories on the, the original bolt that I was having trouble with was maybe the spring took a set. Uh, metallurgy heat treatment or something but nope they're coming this way so if anybody from Wilson Combat is watching this your ejector springs on the last two BCGs I've purchased uh, one a year ago and this one I just received from Primary Arms your stuff is out of spec Okay, so we can add another company to the shit list. Wilson Combat. BCG Ejector Springs. Out of spec.